Hey, it's Professor Dave. Let's memorize the unit circle. He knows a lot about all kinds of stuff. Professor Dave explains. Math students often have trouble with this thing. It's called the unit circle, and it's just a circle with a radius of 1 superimposed on the coordinate plane with the center at the origin. Then we have all the angles that are multiples of pi over 6, as well as the multiples of pi over 4. And we have to know the sine and cosine values for these angles. Let's quickly go over some key points about the unit circle that will make it very easy to remember. First, we must recall what sine and cosine are. From Sokotoa, sine means the length of the leg opposite the angle over the length of the hypotenuse, and cosine means the length of the leg adjacent to the angle over the length of the hypotenuse. For each angle on this unit circle, we are constructing a triangle by drawing a line from this point straight down to the x-axis. The hypotenuse of this triangle is the radius of the circle, which is always 1, and the two legs are each some value less than 1, depending on the angle. What we must understand is that every point on this unit circle has an x-coordinate equal to cosine theta and a y-coordinate equal to sine theta. Take 0 as an example. There's no triangle, but since the radius of the circle is 1, we know that the cosine of 0 must be 1 because the x-coordinate of this point is 1. Likewise, we know that the sine of 0 must be 0 because the y-coordinate of this point is 0. It will be just as easy to figure out the values for half pi, as this point has the coordinates 0, 1. So the cosine of half pi must be 0, while the sine of half pi must be 1. At pi, we get negative 1 and 0. And at 3 halves pi, we get 0 and negative 1. Once we make it to 2 pi, we are back where we started, and the cycle continues. Now, what's important to see is that the cosine and sine of any angle other than these must be somewhere in between negative 1 and 1. Let's take pi over 6, for example. In the last clip, we evaluated the trig functions for these two special triangles, so if you missed that, go check it out now. Otherwise, just take my word for it that the sine of pi over 6 radians, or 30 degrees, is 1 half and the cosine is root 3 over 2. That means that the coordinates of this point are root 3 over 2, 1 half. For quarter pi, we have this other special triangle, and both the sine and cosine of 45 are root 2 over 2. So these are the coordinates of this point. For 2 pi over 6, or pi over 3, we have the same values as for pi over 6, but reversed, since it's the same triangle, just looking at the other angle. That means that these are the coordinates of this point. And that wraps up the first quadrant. Now here's the thing that makes this so easy to remember. We see some fractions and some roots, which may seem unrelated. Just for the sake of creating a pattern, let's replace 0 with root 0 over 2, since root 0 is 0. Let's change 1 half into root 1 over 2, since root 1 is 1. Then we have root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and let's change 1 into root 4 over 2, since root 4 is 2, and 2 over 2 is 1. Now, if we look at the sine values for these angles, which correspond to the y-coordinates of the points, we can start at the x-axis, where the y-value is root 0 over 2. We climb up to root 1 over 2, then root 2 over 2, then root 3 over 2, then root 4 over 2. We could do the same thing with the x-values, which correspond to cosine values for these angles starting with the y-axis, and then moving to the right in the positive direction. Again, we hit the same values. So all we have to do is remember this one numerical sequence, and that the coordinates of each point take the form of cosine theta, sine theta, 
and we will never forget any of these values. Let's return these values to their simplified forms and then extend things into quadrant two. We can see that sine values, or y-coordinates, will remain positive as these points are above the x-axis. 5 sixths pi will have a sine of 1 half, just like 1 sixth pi. 3 quarters pi will have a sine of root 2 over 2, just like quarter pi. 2 thirds pi and 1 third pi each have a sine of root 3 over 2. Now for the cosine values, it's the same thing except that they are now negative as they are to the left of the y-axis. Going into the third quadrant, both sine and cosine become negative as x and y are both negative, but it's still all the same numbers. And into the fourth quadrant, cosines return to being positive while sines remain negative. Knowing this, we could take any of these angles and immediately know the sine and cosine simply by visualizing the unit circle. Take 4 thirds pi, for example. To get the sine of this angle, we simply locate the angle, which can also be thought of as this reference angle, or 1 third pi, but in quadrant 3. Then we recall that sine corresponds to the y-coordinate of this point, and we just move downwards until we get there. 0, negative 1 half, negative root 2 over 2, negative root 3 over 2. To get the cosine value, we just remember that cosine corresponds to the x-coordinate of the point. 0, negative 1 half. We aren't calculating anything. We just have to memorize the locations of the angles, this one numerical sequence, and what the coordinates of the points represent. Once this is ingrained in you, you'll never forget it, so just stare at this until it makes sense. When you have it, it becomes trivial to evaluate trig functions for any common angle. Take something like the tangent of 14 pi over 3. 12 thirds pi is the same as 4 pi and that's twice all the way around, so we can subtract that from the angle to get 2 thirds pi. That gets us right here. Now tangent is sine over cosine, so let's take the y value of this point and divide by the x value of this point. And that gives us negative root 3. What about the cosecant of negative 17 fourths pi? This time we are going in the negative direction. 16 fourths pi is the same as 4 pi, so if we get rid of that, we are just left with negative a quarter pi. That puts us here, where cosine is root 2 over 2, and sine is negative root 2 over 2. Cosecant is 1 over sine, so we take 1 over negative root 2 over 2. We can therefore just flip this over to get negative 2 over root 2, and then we multiply by root 2 over root 2 to get rid of the radical on the bottom. That leaves us with negative root 2. It may take a little while to get accustomed to using the unit circle so quickly, but it's just a matter of practice. When you're ready, let's check comprehension. Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.